Welcome to the Hard to Kill Podcast, the go-to podcast for military, LEO, and EMS professionals, sharing ideas and experiences from around the world to make you hard to kill. Here's your host, Dave Morrow. Uh, so if we're ready to go. Rock and roll. Good to go. go three, two, one. Here we go. Uh, ladies and gents, I'm here with uh, Timogen Tan, uh, Dr. Timogen Tan, and uh, it's cool to have a, a chat with you, bro, because the last time I think we chatted was probably like 2010, maybe a long like, time ago, like face to face like this. It was, it was a while ago. Yeah. So just a bit of backstory. Uh, Dr. Tan <laughs> was, uh, was in my platoon uh, when I taught my last infantry course in 2008. And now he's a full bird doctor and he's got a rock star business uh, teaching survival skills. So uh, Dr. Tan, Timogen, how's it going, buddy? And uh, why don't you give the listeners a little bit of your background, bro? No, that's great. Great to see you again, man. Last time, uh, it was when you were non-commissioned. Like, it was the last time you were a sergeant wow. that, I, that I saw you. Dude, that was a yeah. while ago, man. That's a while ago, man. <laughs> But just a little bit about me. My name's uh, Timogen. Um, I was trained in, um, in family medicine, extra training in wilderness medicine. And now I teach survival medicine. So the big question for a lot of the people who um, enjoy my content and learn from me is how do you manage medical emergencies in situations that can kill you as fast, if not faster than that medical condition? And how do you do it with limited resources or what you have on your personal kit? So that's what I love doing. I do a lot of collaborations with survivalists, people that you've probably seen on the History Channel. I work a lot with uh, people on The Lone Show, Naked and Afraid, uh, that type of deal. And it's been really cool to see how, uh, as a physician, how does my medical management change and how do I teach it differently when I know hypothermia is going to kill me fast or when I know there's a bleeding risk and we have bears and wolves like on our trail. And how does that all change as a physician? Because I'm sure you've, you've come across this and a lot of your followers who've been on active deployment, it's not the same thing as fixing a boo-boo or doing any civilian medical things. It's a completely different context. So to be able to think differently and to, to kind of piece together some of my, um, my, my experiences on the military side from traveling and to put it all together to say like, hey, this is how we can save lives faster and better and more consistently. Like that's, that's what I love doing. And it's been such a cool journey. And um, if, if you want, we can like get into like how I got there because it was, yeah, of course, we're going to get into that, man. Of course. We're yeah. Gonna get into that. So like, I, obviously I didn't, uh, I didn't get to know like who you were and nor did I get to really know anybody uh, that well, because, you know, the instructor troop and recruit role, like, you know, we got to keep our professional distances. And then I, by the time you got back to the unit, like I was getting ready for pre-training. And then by the time I got back, um, I think you were already out because you're going to med school. Yeah. So why don't you fill me in on kind of what was the motivation a to join the military and then yeah. B I'm guessing you already had that inkling that you wanted to go to med school. Uh, so mm -hmm. how did you make those? How, how did you kind of get to that decision um, in like, was that, like 12 years ago, 13 years ago? Yeah. So it feels like such a long time. And it was kind of like a, a weird ass situation because I remember um, 18 years old, 17 years old, not knowing what the heck I, I wanted to do, right? I knew maybe something medical, maybe a paramedic. And I remember uh, walking down St. Catherine Street, looking up and uh, seeing like a statue, right? Um, not, it was not, uh, the new, the old, not the new room massage? Not the new no, room. <laughs> no, no, not that. That not didn't that. inspire you? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> but uh, it was the, the old Canadian post office that is now the Canadian uh, Army like recruiting office. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it was a recruiting office. I saw that. I was like, like, um, it, it, subconsciously it was just in there. Um, and then, um, I, I was at uh, college and I met Barozowski. I'm not sure if you remember yeah, him. Of course. Of course. The bear. Yeah. So I, I, I met, I met bear. He was, uh, we played volleyball together. Right. And I was like, fuck, like I, I I'm thinking about some kind of medical thing, but, uh, I have no money. Right. And I would see him coming every day, um, with those, you know, those boxes, from X's, you know, the, the white boxes with all the, the food. I was like, uh, man, how do you the, always the box lunches? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, he was like, yeah, man, like I go to work every Tuesday and like, uh, they, they give the, give me these lunch boxes and I just keep them. I have like five. And then like that fuels me for the whole week. I was like, Oh, that's sweet. I was like, how much do you make? It was like, Oh, I make this much. And they pay for like university, like at least a decent portion. I was like, all right, sign me up. So like that, that's how I got recruited at uh, the Canadian Grenadier Guards. And at that time, it was just purely money and, um, you know, infantry that they'll, they'll take 
pretty much anyone, you know, if you pass all the, the markers. Matter. So I was in and uh, I got to meet some really cool uh, people, uh, Sergeant Butters at the at Butterworth at the time. And uh, he really kind of put me in the direction and um, kind of showed me what's out there. Specifically, uh, I was talking to him and uh, I, I don't know what his rank is now, but Anhorn, he might be some high ranking officer at this time. I don't know. I think and he's a major he, now. Yeah, Corey's a major. Oh, now. shit. That, that's amazing. I don't know. But they introduced the thought of the disaster assistance relief team. Go anywhere in 24 hours, provide a high quality relief. And I was like, damn, that's, that's what I want to do, you know? So I was geared towards that, more geared towards survival, like uh, all, all that winter warfare stuff. Like I was trying to get colder, stay out there longer. I think my longest stretch was like two and a half months straight in those 10 man tents up, uh, with, with up, it, up north. And uh, I really fell in love with that. Uh, but what I saw was that no matter what kind of context I was in, I was always drawn towards like a medical thing. And I found myself not knowing what to do. You know, like we had big guys like, um, is Bango still in, in the army? Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you got these like really, really cool, cool dudes, but you, you put them in a situation where like any human being, um, they can be exposed to something and have a medical condition. So there are people like him. Or big guys, people we look up to, people we like really trust, but you put them in a severe hypothermia and they're called, like delusional and stuff like that. That's scary shit. And you don't know how to treat that. I found myself in multiple different situations, whether it's the extreme cold, extreme hot or anything. And being in that situation where you're just completely helpless, you know, you're like, I want to help you. I don't know how, and I know this can be really dangerous. So that kind of put me down a path of like, Hey, I should probably do something more, more, more medical uh, based. Mm -hmm. And, um, it took me a while to get to med school. Um, and eventually I found my way there while I was working in international development overseas. So while I was in the army, I would be studying to get into like international development to go overseas to help people. Right. Uh, I remember going on the gun ranges and like, uh, working night shifts and like pu pulling off my, my Kevlar helmet and like looking at my flashcard in my helmet, putting it back on. And then like, <laughs> like they're literally like active fire ranges. And I've been Re studying. Reservist you know? life, man. It's a reservist, reservist life. life. <laughs> reservist life. It's like, ah, uh, Sergeant, I got a, I got an exam on Tuesday. So yeah. like, I'm just going to peace out and like chill and read some notes. Like, yeah, no worries, man. I got one too. Exactly. <laughs> Very cool, man. So yeah, this was always something that clearly you were driven to and um like just the experiences that you had in the military i guess kind of you must have had some kind of spark and now just kind of fanned the flames a little bit so absolutely um, so you you took that experience that you had in the military um uh, clearly had you know an impression on you and then from there you went on and decided to go to med school so you're in the states right now so how did that start yeah. like, did you go right to the states or did you start here in canada mm -hmm. like where where did that journey take you yeah, so for all of our uh, medics or medical related army people applying right now, you know how hard it is to get into med school in, in Canada. I tried once, fucking got rejected almost immediately, like automatic auto reject, because sometimes, especially on, in Ontario, they look at your grades, right? And they have like an automated system that just auto rejects you. So like, I was like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> like, you Thou know, shall like, shall not pass, get out of yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> get out of here, you know, so I, that didn't go. And um, it was really like serendipitous. Like I was dating a girl from uh, Massachusetts and um, she was like, Hey, just apply to the U S like we were dating at the time. So I was like, all right, I'll apply to the U S and uh, at the last minute it was, um, it was her family doctor who said, looked at my profile, coached me through. And it was like, you should apply to be an osteopathic physician. And I was like, don't want to crack back. Don't want to be a massage therapist. I'm good to go. Like, no thanks. And she was like, a, she was a, a major in the, the, the U S air force. Right. So she was up there in rank and she was a doctor there. So she's like, no, I'm a doctor. I treat people, but this is what the degree is. You have like additional training uh, to work on musculoskeletal issues, whether that's joint muscles, ligaments, that type of thing. I was like, all right, like what's, what's the difference? She was like, same training, but additional stuff. So I was like, all right, I'll apply to that. So I actually got uh, an, uh, um, a scholarship to Michigan state, a decent one. So I was like, all right, you're going to take me. You're going to pay for a decent chunk. I'll, I'll come. So I went, I went to Michigan state and that's how I got plugged in to the U S system. And, uh, they've been giving me kind of signing incentives to stay in the States, uh, for mm -hmm. after, uh, for residency. And then uh, I think uh, next year is going to be the first time in over eight years that I'm coming back home. Oh, wow. Okay, cool, man. So basically like you're, you're, you're in America, man. Like you're, yeah, 
you're a knife wielding. I think you got one on your wrist right now. Like you're. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you some of my stuff because, uh, yeah, like some of the collabs that I've been doing recently. It's just like these guys are awesome, and they've been just giving me a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, I can imagine that like you're you're definitely in the right right place at the right time, and you know, having just seen mm -hmm. kind of your progression on Instagram, and that's basically how I I, I realized what you were doing, what you were doing because of Instagram, right? Because until I got on Instagram, which was only like literally two years ago because i started a business yeah. um there's a lot of people i just lost contact with and you know you have your own business too so um okay so you got that you, you got your your p is it a phd or is it just a, it's it's a doctor it, it's like it's a, it's a doctor's degree right so, okay and yeah. so and now you have that ability to uh, not only you know treat people but you also have that extra doctor of osteopathic medicine is that what you call it that can yeah that absolutely and, and, and that's cool because we're talking about that just before, you know, like how, you know, I appreciate going to my osteopath because it was really my osteopath. It wasn't, you know, my physio, it wasn't my chiro, it wasn't my massage therapist that really started making things work better for me. My, yeah, osteopath was just jabbing like his elbow into my um, SI joint and uh, doing all kinds of kind of like my, bringing my hip over and like pushing down on my hip and like all the, the, like i would hear like this clunk sound and Man. i was like what's going on and then like, i'd start sweating and i was like whoa because at that point my back was in such bad state and uh um, yeah like I, then i'd get up and I, I told him like man i can i can do the tango now like i felt like so like i was like yeah but yeah like, what'd you do he's like well yeah like this was tight and he's like you know you're 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 um, T spine is, is really jacked up too. And mm -hmm. then he was like working down around my foot. I'm like, you're like a magician. Like, so yeah. it's just, it was, it was intense. So I, and I assume like, that's, that's what you do, right? Like you do that. Yeah, kind it's, of it's very, make people it's very similar. Like you, you felt it. Like as soon as they're done, like your legs feel like jello, you feel like, like you're, you're good. You can like take a nap and like, everything's all loose, but that, that that's a, definitely that's a component so that, that I do. Yeah. So specifically at our clinic, like we treat um, just your regular people with chronic diseases like diabetes, whatever. Uh, but we have a lot of obstetric patients too. People are pregnant. And when you're mm -hmm. pregnant, all your joints are super loose. So to be able to like have a mom who's like just crying 24 hours straight, something's wrong with her pelvis. And to be able to be like two seconds, fix it. And they're like instantly feeling better. That's like just a huge reward for myself as someone able to do that. And for her too. And on the survival aspect, when you're in the bush and like, let's say you ran through all your, your, your pain meds, you're, you're like 20 days in, you're like, you know, like, how do you, how do you treat yourself? Like uh, just knowing very key concepts on how to relax your muscles or how to stretch properly um, and how to do it on other people and teach other people in five minutes to do it on, on you. Like it, it's a huge difference because you put yourself out of the game for one day um, and, uh, you're not able to provide food or water in that one day you get dehydrated, you get malnourished, and then you just have, um, a decreased amount of motivation to, to kind of push, push on. And then you become a dead weight, you know, dead weight to your team. Worst possible scenario, right? Worst possible scenario, especially if you're that guy weighing your team down. I'm sure like yeah. everyone in the back of their mind in a ruck march, you're like, I don't want to be the fucking like last person there holding up the whole people. <laughs> Like, yeah, uh, that ha I remember that happening to me on a on a leadership course, and I still remember the feeling, and it was the worst feeling. In the worst world. I was feeling. Like, I was like 500 meters away, and I was just like, I hate my life. This should never yeah. happen again. You know. Yeah. Um, at least I was still walking. But okay, so it, can we use me as an example? Like, let's say I'm in the woods, and this is something that recurs. Like, it's in my it's yeah, in my absolutely. mind. Like, if I'm, you know, uh, a case in point. Let's say I go mm -hmm. out with my son. My son's only four, but eventually we'll, we'll sure. go and do like more adventurous stuff, right? Sure. And um, you know, like my 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 back's been herniated in two spots, but it's it's quite manageable mm -hmm. now. But yeah, all it takes is I put my pack on the wrong way or I take the wrong step, and all of a sudden yep. I'm locked. Like I'm locked. I can't I can't move. Hundred percent. Right? Um, so like other than like, let's say my 12, 13 year old son being able to do something is, is there a way, cause I haven't found mm -hmm. a way other than like just lying there and kind of crying. Um, yeah. what would you say in like that situation or any situation? Like mm -hmm. how, how would you go about just making sure that, okay, this is bad, but you can manage it uh -huh. by doing a few simple things. So two big concepts, uh, is to stretch a muscle. Uh, there's kind of two mechanisms, right? 
you have a string, right? Pretend this is your muscle fibers. You either stretch it so much when you release, it gets looser, right? The other way is to approximate point A and B. So this is A, this is B. You approximate it and let that uh, system kind of reset. And what happens from like a medical standpoint is that your muscles are attached to nerves that go up to your brain and then come down. When it's tight, it tells the nerve that it's tight and then there's a pain loop there and it keeps it spastic. But when you disrupt that pain loop and say, hey, it's actually a relaxed thing, it, it chills down for a bit. So in, in that situation, when you have that spasm, um, sometimes it's not the best time to like pull it, pull it tight. It's actually a better if you approximate points A and B. So like you said, um, you found positions that uh, are kind of relaxing for you, or at least you're not feeling the pain. To go even further, what you want to look at in whatever body part you're doing. So this is applicable for any kind of body part that you have a spasm in. So you have that position that you like, put your hand on or your, your buddy's hand on where that spasm is. Does rotation in one direction or the other make it softer? Because you can actively feel that muscle get softer. Does it get softer if you go down or if you go up, if you side bend? When you're in that perfect position and you feel your hands feel super mushy, you wait a few seconds, you'll feel it go softer still and keep on modifying it for a good five minutes. And um, just to give you an example, a lot of the patients that I do this on are like, like pretty, pretty racked up people, people who have been on massive uh, car accidents who are coming back uh, date, like a uh, week two, who are still spastic and just putting them in that position and holding it and like uh, encouraging their muscles to kind of reset helps them relieve that spasm without taking any muscle relaxants, without taking any steroids, without taking any uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatories. So for people like my elderly patient who have GI bleeds who are fall risk. The moment they fall, they're going to bleed in the brain and they're going to go like that. So for those people who can't have the medicine, they come like on a monthly basis because it does last multiple weeks if you do it properly and consistently. Mm. Um, to be able to do that to these frail people, like it, it's very feasible. For you specifically, you have a herniated disc. So what your son can do, like if, you, if you're hiking and there's like a picnic table or something like that, that you can be elevated, um, what he can do is all you have to do is kind of... Uh, butt up to the edge of the table so that one leg is hanging off and uh, you're going to have like a 90 degree with the, with the leg and all your, your son or daughter has to do is kind of like hold on to that, uh, that knee and provide like a, just lean back a little bit. And what that does, you lean back and lean down a little bit and you can rotate the, the, the knee or the leg a little bit that adds a little bit of a rotation at the hip that decompresses that lumbar um, segment. And it provides immediate relief. So you can tell, tell him or her like, Hey, that's the right spot. Just keep it there. And then you just chill out for a bit. So cool. we do that for a lot of our pe people just before we send them to surgery. So if they're coming here, extreme pain in the, in the clinic and they're like, man, Dr. Chai, my, 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 I, I messed up my back. Like I can't move. Like I literally can't walk. I'm like stuck like this. And I'm basically, I want a wheelchair and uh, can you fix me? Um, and if they can't have medicines, I have a patient who has heart failure. Basically, his heart's working at 15%. You can't give him medications because so, there's so many medications that can put him into worse heart failure and his heart just stops, you know? So to be able to do that decompression uh, right there in the office, provide immediate uh, relief and say like, okay, uh, we've, we've stopped this. Uh, we can put like some kind of patches or topical stuff so it doesn't go systemically. And then we send you to orthopedic surgery. And uh, you can do that in the field to like, kind of uh, temporize that so you can uh, hike out or uh, get out of that situation. Very cool. Yeah, that, dude, that, that, that's like once he's old enough, he's definitely getting this training because it's always in the yeah. back of my mind. I'm like, ah, because I, I like going hiking, right? And so yeah, yeah. You know, I want to go with him and, and, and get, him, um, get him used to being outdoors. Mm -hmm. But it's in the back of my mind. Like if it's just me and him yeah. and now I get stuck. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna teach yeah. the old X-Man how to, how, how, to, yeah. how to decompress my spines. We're like, that. what are we doing? Yeah. I'll turn it into a game, son. Come on, we got to get daddy out of here. Okay, yeah. cool. Absolutely. Um, I think it's like the, the most fun game because like if you always train it as a game, once stuff really happens, they'll be like, oh, I know how to treat that. I treat my dad, you know? So that, like, that's where I want my kids to be at, you know, especially for things that are a little more scary. Here in the U.S., everyone has a gun. Everyone, like, concealed carries. Like, you don't know when shit's going to pop off. And um, to, to, to have a peace of mind that my, my daughter or my son knows how to stop a massive bleed, because you can literally bleed out within two to three minutes, is really reassuring to me. Because I know that's kind of the, the world we live in today. And uh, to say, 
um, not only to be involved in that education, but to be involved on a systemic level to be like, hey, in schools, you need this type of kit to make sure that if this does go happen, th this does happen and there's a mass casualty event, there's some kind of protocol to help teachers or even students to students to know how to manage that. And it's very easy. Like if you can treat an infantryman how to do this, you can treat like pretty much anyone, you know? Because this like guy, uh, dude, I was this guy, teacher will yeah. see qualified, man. Yeah, they yeah took all there of, you like, go. All his infantry dudes and th taught us how to like patch holes in people and like put on tourniquets and stuff. It was, but honestly, that training was the best training course I've ever done in the military. The tactical combat casualty care was incredible. I love we're it. Working, we're working on um, pigs to learn how to put in the um, the uh, decompression needle. Is that what it's called? The one yeah. that goes in between yep. the, the intercostals. Yeah. Um, that was, that was really cool. Uh, you know, and then learning how to put in like a nasal pharyngeal, um, airway or whatever you call it. I yeah. Know, I can't remember the terms, but airway. Yeah, exactly. To, to make sure the airway doesn't get compromised. Like all these things, super cool. And I was just talking to, because you got, you got a kit that's there, man. Yeah, so I do got, got a kit. I'm describing. You got all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm so curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm, going on. I'm like, I'm like a table stuff. full of stuff because like, uh, for those of you who are just like finding <laughs> me, like I, I collaborated with so many companies to give like this holiday giveaway. And one of them is this like $200 kit. So this is from trauma packs are out of the, the U S and uh, the cool thing about this, this is born and raised and designed by a paramedic that, um, who has so much experience in TCCC training. So everything here is so well thought of. And you know, when you're buying military stuff, you can feel Im immediately when you touch it, whether it's shit or not, you know, you can feel the quality in, in the materials. And this is like high quality stuff. So number one, it's uh, Molly compatible and it's a rip away. So this can be on your pack, on your belt. And when you're addressing yourself or your patient, you undo the clip and it just rips away. You put it next to the patient and uh, you start your kind of treatment algorithm. Tourniquet as it should is on the outside and uh, it just pops off. It got these uh, little pop-up bungee cords. Right. And then you have your mm -hmm. primary tourniquet. And what's cool is you have a secondary in here. So oh this God. kit is made nice. for uh, massive bleeds and like things that can kill you the fastest. So it's not your boo-boo kit. This is for like what I keep in my car going down the highway in anticipation of something like a mass casualty, motor vehicle accident, that type of thing. So just to look at this, there's jam packed with a bunch of stuff, things that you might rec recognize like an Israeli bandage, Israeli, which is really cool. Israeli bandage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the longest bandages you can use. And this is the updated one. So it has extra padding in it as well. You got your secondary uh, tourniquet over here. This is a Sam XT and these are customizable. So the reason why I have this is because uh, this is my personal preference, the Sam XT. Uh, for most uh, military people, they're familiar with the uh, Cat Gen 7. Um, mm -hmm. cat tourniquet the combat applicator tourniquet um, this one's kind of another approved one um, and in addition to this we got uh, your you talked about it your needle decompression right here a big girthy mm -hmm. guy that you can shove in there for a pneumothorax um, and in addition to that we got like you said nasal pharyngeal airway with with lube just like that and then for uh, sucking chest wounds let's say you get shot through and through and you're getting that air in and it's just accumulating and pressing on that lung we have a high fin double pack over here. Oh, cool. So this What's is that? for, so what this does is it's kind of like, a, remember those training, you put like a Ziploc bag and you kind of uh, cover four sides. It's got the, so it's the got air the leaves. Already. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. this is like yeah. a, a, a very sophisticated version of that. So uh, you can put one on the ent entry wound. And if there's an exit wound, you can put one over there too. Gotcha. So that's really cool. Very cool. And uh, obviously they have something for hypothermia. Their updated packages actually has um, um, uh, an updated version of this. It's, it's bigger and it's 400 uh, times warmer. So it uses insulating cells on top of this. So that's like a, a really cutting edge uh, technology right now because we know these guys, we've seen them all over our kits before. This reflects like 90% of your, your body heat, but the other one reflects more and it has an insulating layer, which is different than this because this has no insulation. So that's really cool. And they're, they're including it in their, their, their kits. And then the last thing that I really like that they included here is um, this type of uh, pressure dressing slash tourniquet. So the tourniquets over here that we can use, can't use it on kids, can't use it on dogs. They're too skinny, too small. Yeah. So if a kid kid gets that injury, you, you, you pressure dressing uh, would be the thing to do, or you can do something like this. So it's like a really stretchy material and you just wrap it. And it kind of tells you the strength that you wrap it in. So that's, uh, it has like, like uh, an automatic diagram to know how much pressure that you're putting. So I really love that they include that, that because uh, oftentimes like um, it, 
adults aren't the only patient types. So yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, so that's just one thing. That's one thing. And like, uh, for people who are interested in that type of thing, um, my link is very, very easy. It's www.survivaldoctors, that's plural, .com forward slash giveaway. And if you want to get um, more into some of this survival content, it's the same website forward slash links, plural. And that's it. Sweet. Yeah, we'll drop those. Um, we'll drop those in the notes when I put it up on my website. And, um, yeah, we'll definitely get that in the Facebook group too. So right um, on. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, let's get that kit out there, man. Dude, I want one. <laughs> like, okay, so I know. Uh, I, I want to get back to the kit, but uh, my kit. So uh -huh. the fact that I still have it for whatever reason, I had two when I was on tour. Like, I was just like, mm -hmm. how do I have two? Like, how do I get two? Don't know. Anyway, so uh -huh. I had one at home. I'm like, cool souvenir, whatever. Mm -hmm. um and there's some stuff that was still in it but you know like uh things like quick clot i don't know if is that still something that people use because uh, yep. we had quick like, clot and combat actually... clot so we got it over here I, I know we used to give yep. the uh okay so before what we used to do is uh they would give the actual package right that was the powder um, okay. but then they stopped giving it because what was happening is that, um, you'd be stressed, you'd crack it open. Somebody would have a wound, you'd drop it. You'd pour a whole pack of that in or yeah, exactly. Uh, it would cauterize the wound on the outside, but it wouldn't actually get Not on the to the actual wound itself and people would yep. still bleed out. Right. Um, so we started using the, um, the, the, the packing gauze that was impregnated yep. with it, which was yep. cool. so is that, that's, that's still something obviously that yep. is, is used. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is like a kind of like a bandage, but you bring up such a huge point. A lot of people, a lot of preppers out there, they buy a bunch of quick clot combat gauze and they're like, um, just putting it on top of the wound. But yeah. the, the, the reason why it works, it just facilitates, you can't stop a bleed without, without applying pressure. So right. the best thing to do is exactly how you were trained. Uh, you have to do those uh, packing gauze and you shove it in there until it feels rock solid, put a pressure dressing on top of that. And if you so happen to have something that helps coagulate good but if you just have that uh, bandage and you put shove it in there that's going to be as good there's no difference in mortality so there's been many studies that look at hey do more people die because they just have packing versus they packing plus quick clock and the answer is no uh, so okay. if you're yeah. kind of like budgeting you can get like maybe like four to five even more um um of the, the packet packing material for the cost of one of these Right. So I would rather have five of those packing materials than one package of quick, quick lot. And I noticed the quick clot. Well, I mean, obviously I've had it for over a decade. It's rock solid. Yeah. Now. Like the hemostatic agent has, has obviously expired and it obviously it, 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 yeah, exactly. It's no good anymore. It's, it's a rock. So, uh, but I, yeah. I just want to, <laughs> I want to go, uh, and just explain, I guess the, the, the story with my, my teach triple C bag. Uh, so, my daughter was born just over a year ago. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, my, the plan was we we're supposed to go to the birthing center. Um, mm -hmm. My wife had a midwife and everything like that. It was all planned out. But yeah. as we all know, when you plan something out, um, you know, when you hit the line of departure, the plan goes to shit, right? So uh, yeah. it turns out my wife's in full labor. It happened like that. Midwife is far, man. She's coming from the South shore. There's traffic and I'm calling. I'm like, Hey, can you make it here for like a little bit quicker? She's like, Oh, she's like, uh, I'll be there in like an hour and a half. I'm like, it's going to be pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyways, long story short. Um, yeah, my wife is literally in the middle of giving birth, like in our basement. And I'm like, wow, this is like 1910. Like this is happening. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, yeah. all right. So I went and grabbed my teachable C bag. I still had some fresh gloves. The gloves, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was like, okay, what else? Like, I had the scissors. I was like, all right, man. If I need to cut, I've done this before <laughs> with my first son. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna cut the umbilical cord. I was getting towels, yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm like, I actually get to use this bag. Sick. Uh, so thankfully though, the, the midwife finally showed up. But uh, yeah, man, like, um, like I, you're I, you're I, ready. I, I, dude, I was so amped. I was like, I, and I wasn't. Like I was amped, but I was like, okay, this is like, this is actually for real. Um, amped and, and focused. There. And focused. Yeah. I was like, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this. I need to make sure like 
obviously, you know, I, I want to make sure that I protect myself and protect my wife as well. And so like, you know, like I just went into this zone that I hadn't been in in so mm. long and I felt, I felt really good. Cause I was like, all right, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in charge of some stuff here. So yeah. uh, I actually got to deliver my, my daughter, which was freaking awesome. That's amazing. The midwife was there and she's like, can you assist? I was like, hells yeah. So yeah, it was such a cool experience, but had I not done all that T C like uh, planning and stuff like that and, mm-hmm. and getting ready just for like kind of blood and guts and, and all that stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I know that that would, you know, if somebody wasn't mentally prepared or, or had done any mm-hmm. uh, preparatory, preparatory training for some, for some people that could be way too overwhelming and just, Oh yeah. Control, you know, uh, like there's yeah. a lot of blood, there's a, it's a lot of confusion. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of screaming. Like, so yeah, I was just able to kind of, whoo, I know it's pretty cool. That's I was amazing. My, I was doing my box breathing. I, I saw. Yeah. Did, like, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, I like, still yeah. use it. I still use it. Yeah, yeah. I remember us teaching you guys that. I was like, yeah, was just absolutely. Like getting in the zone and uh, making sure like I wasn't stressed out and it was really cool. So yeah, yeah. a little, little anecdotal story about uh, having a teacher yeah. pouch uh, at home at all times. Mm-hmm. You never know when you have to go and deliver a baby. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> or, do a, or do a mass CAS event. <laughs> exactly. And that, and that kind of like feeling that um, like hyped up, prepared, and then focused is what I hope to like uh, give to all, all my, my students, you know, because like, there's nothing like it, you know, you're, you're just like, you feel in the zone, you feel ready and you know, you're going to be changing someone's life or saving someone's life. Um, so that's like the, the goal right now when I'm, when I'm teaching. Um, and uh, the cool component uh, of all of this is it's not just like a medical class. You can take any TCCC anywhere, um, civilian side or otherwise. Uh, but uh, a lot of us, uh, especially military people, uh, we, we rely on our kit quite, quite heavily, right. Um, for resupplies, for like, uh, knowing our standards, knowing our protocols. But, uh, one of the things that, uh, kind of, um, evolved during my training outside the military is uh, primitive survival. So a lot of my good mentors, they're these guys, you, you shove them in the middle of nowhere. They got a loincloth and their hands, no water, no food. And, uh, you drop them 200, um, clicks out. And they, they come, they come home, you know, they come home and it's, it's like, it, it was a vacation for them. So they've been teaching me a lot of cool stuff and, um, to be able to incorporate that, to be like, Hey, like I'm in this situation. I didn't anticipate being out for this long, but I can do all these vital things in addition to make sure everyone's okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, one, one of the things that, uh, we're, we're doing in this massive giveaway is also primitive, uh, survival teaching. So, um, w- one of my good buddies, Donnie Dust. So he's like, uh, he's been on multiple TV shows. He's a TV consultant, ex Marine. Uh, he did a lot of like uh, undercover stuff with the Marines as well. So he's a really cool dude. But he's like a real life caveman. Like if you ever follow him at Donnie Dust on Instagram, like he looks like a straight out caveman, and he is the guy that I go to for anything primitive survival because being out with him, it's like sh- I can do anything. You know, you have that feeling to be like. I don't need my knife. I don't need like my ax. I don't need anything. Um, I, I just need these two things and a lot of knowledge and practice. Um, and uh, to add to his courses, cause he teaches a lot as well to be like, Hey, these are the updates to uh, medical management. And it's uh, something that uh, I, I feel like is a, a beautiful kind of uh, synergistic uh, experience between survivalists and coaches and ex Marines and like military people who may not have the most up-to-date medical stuff too. So there's a lot of different companies that are coming together to, to help educate people to get that goal of saving lives in these uh, unforgiving environments. Yeah, that's very cool, man. Um, so are you doing like seminars where people come and actually see you? Like obviously the COVID environment sucks. So mm-hmm. I, that yeah. may put a, a, like a, a wrench in your, in your, in your plans, but is that, is that yeah. kind of what you, you're doing or is, or is your, is what you're doing now just basically like, online and you can learn through video mm-hmm. and stuff like that like what, what are you what are you up to right now because it's, it's it sounds really cool yeah so this is like so new in my kind of uh, business journey right um so right now i was like it, it was almost maybe eight months ago where i just had like the concept of like hey this is exactly what i want to do these are the people that i, I want to teach and serve um so everything right now has just been free content you know if you want to hop on a live on my facebook on my instagram uh, on my I'm, I'm on tiktok now uh, yeah, which me is too. blown up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to follow so you on like, TikTok. I, I just yeah. lurk though. So I'll, I'll follow you, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like um, to be able to teach people and to get them like, Hey, this exists and I can get this type of education. That's what I want. And then on the live events, then I give as much uh, value and information as, as I can. And if they have questions, like uh, I was on the COVID units for almost three months 
Like I did inpatient ICU type of care, people intubated, pronouncing like four or five people dead every single day. Like a lot of our people are very scared. Don't, they don't know what's true, what's not, especially in the US. Um, and uh, a lot of our, our followers have questions about that. So if, if you're thinking about like, hey, like this survival stuff is cool, but in addition to that, I have a bunch of medical questions. You're always free to like jump on our lives and ask those straight up, even if it's not on topic, you know? Oh, hell so yeah. it's just like, you know? So That's it's really, it's cool, really fun. It's really yeah, fun. Yeah, no kidding. It's really fun. Well, uh, dude, I'm, I, like no joke, like once all this COVID stuff blows over, I don't trust myself without gear in the woods. Like I can go camping, don't get me wrong. Like uh -huh. I can go for a hike as long as I got my like Gore-Tex and I got my knife yep. and I got some rations, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. man, if, if I were to go in the woods for any extended period of time, man, uh, without like military yeah. resupply, don't know. I, I, I definitely like to learn a few things. Right. I, I definitely am a, I'm an outdoor virgin for all the years we do in the military. Like, I think people have a misconception when you're not like special forces or like a green beret mm -hmm. or you're a line infantry soldier. It's not like you go and like learn survival yeah. skills, man. You, you, you sleep it with like everybody else. There's a bunch of stuff following you, water, food, Absolutely. food you name it. So I don't really know much, man. Like I, I grew up yeah. in the suburbs. It's like, I don't know shit about shit. Like, I don't know what tracks yeah. to look for to find food. Like I just go find water. And like, if I didn't have any purification, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. Like, I guess this is good to go. Yeah. Like, so these are the yeah. things that like in my mind, I'm like, I should be better at. So like, absolutely. Like, I, I'd love to be able to come down and freaking like learn a few things, yeah. man. Cause I follow so you on, I'm like, Oh, I need to learn like, that. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. So the cool thing about what we're uh, kind of gearing towards is not only do we provide a lot of value online, there will be a, a course that people can pre-register for. I'm hoping to launch it sometime in uh, February, March of this year. Um, but a lot of who I collaborate with are these like high quality, like experience, like to the point of like decades, multiple decades of experience. But I go out with them. And uh, if it's uh, to make content or to teach a course, like our goal is to, in the future, kind of do that collaboration where people are learning these high quality survival and medical skills at the same time. Mm -hmm. So like there will be scenario trainings and also practical stuff because yeah, I can run scenarios with you all day, but if you don't know how to build your shelter, you're going to be, you're going to be cold tonight. You're going to be cold tonight. <laughs> you're going to have to feel that, you know, and when you feel it, like, you, you know, like what to change next time. Uh, I'm sure every military person have felt that bring too much gear, wearing it too warm. And you know how you kind of like modify it to the point where like six years in, you know exactly what you need to bring to the T, right? No extra ounce and uh, no extra stuff. And mm -hmm. everything that you use, is like so, so keyed in. And uh, that's what we're hoping to kind of enforce in these trainings, these one-on-one -on -one trainings. Um, and in addition to that, like if people are in the area while we're in, in those locations, whether that's producing content, um, we'll likely have like, like events where people just come out uh, cause, um, my buddies, like they, they just operate on these vast amount of lands, whether that's hot temperatures in the desert, in the mountains of Colorado, doing altitude type of stuff. Um, and, uh, or like cold, cold weather. So like six feet of snow type of deal stuff that we, we've done up North, uh, but with a lot less gear, which is scary, but, uh, to have a doctor kind of have all the protocols there. So it's safe is, is a plus is a definitely no kidding, a plus. Man. So what's that, what's the wildest shit you've done, man? Yeah. So, um, most recently my, uh, my buddy Donnie, so I go to him, he, he messaged me on Instagram, right? He, he was just finished uh, a TV show called alone on the history channel. So he came back from that. Uh, he was on Instagram promoting the stuff and he, uh, came across my stuff. He was like, Oh man, that's pretty cool. Like, what's your background? I was like, Hey, I was in the military. We did a lot of Arctic uh, warfare, that type of stuff. And he was like, Oh shit. Like, you have, have you ever thought about like that type of TV stuff? I was like, not really, but like, that's cool. And then we got talking I flew out to Colorado because I was like, hey, I want to learn some stuff. So I brought my, my kit. I have my, uh, my, old, my old military knife and my Gerber that's still here. You know? Oh, you still got the Gerber. And yeah, that's good. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I went out there and he was like, what are you doing, man? You're learning primitive survival. That stays in the truck. You know, like imagine, imagine like having everything keyed in, bringing it, and you're like, that all stays. You're just like, like you, you – you know, it's cold there too. Colorado yeah. is cold at altitude. It's below yeah. freezing. Uh, so it's like, you can get, you can bring your sleeping bag, uh, your rock stays, your knife stays. Uh, you can bring a pot. We're not bringing any food. Like I'll carry the food, this much food for three guys for four days, this much food to share amongst three guys for four days. It's like, you want to eat? We're going to hunt. 
We're going to fish. Yeah, You're not bringing a fishing pole. Ass. You're not going to bring a fishing pole. We're, we're going to do all this uh, primitive. So we spent um, a, a day acclimatizing at uh, around like 8,000, 9,000 feet. And then we were making our own rocks out of willow trees. Um, and then uh, we got all rocked up, uh, put, put our sleeping bag there, put our kit there. Uh, we made our own knives, our spear points, our traps. All, all that stuff goes into the, the rock that we just made. We hike up to 13,000 feet everyone's feeling except donnie of course he lives up there but like me and me and the, the our, our camera guy we were like feeling the altitude getting headaches getting nauseous and we're just like trucking through like just zoned in and ruck marge mode just up the mountain and uh, we were hunting ptarmigan we did fishing with the uh, hand fishing got these big cutthroat trouts we were sk we were uh, processing them with just blades like like this so we this is this is this is the knife that that, that i had so uh, we made uh flint naps knives like these to process game to cut things through and we learned how to do that so there's like your multi-tool is a rock like this and you use things like deer like antlers to snap it and then once it snaps you have these razor sharp blades and that's what we use to process things up there and we were trapping stuff and all a lot of this is on youtube and this was like in the beginning of my like editing stuff so it's a little like not the best but it's it's you still learn stuff so if you want to see it on youtube it's the survivaldoctors.com forward slash links you can check out the mm -hmm. youtube there but like i just learned so much in that like five days that i was like hey like this has to be a thing for me like i, I don't care like how i incorporate it this has to be a thing for me because in my in my heart i was like this is what i was missing you know like mm -hmm. being a doctor is awesome you save a lot of lives you you change a lot of lives but to do so in that environment and to be like, hey, I'm going to make um, a bunch of these like apocalyptic survive anything like medical providers. It's just like, yeah, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. That's really cool, man. You're you're like primitive man, like 40,000, 100,000 years ago, like breaking off pieces of rock and like cutting fish guts open. That's incredible, man. I don't yeah. I wouldn't even know what rock to pick up to do it exactly like, it's, it's, that one doesn't it's crazy uh, that one doesn't work i'd be like nah, i guess i'm yeah. going hungry <laughs> yeah yeah intense, and making man. fire just like like in in the army i was taught to bring at least three different uh sources of fire we got our bic lighters we got some torches got some matches and the shitty matches that we get in our emery packs and uh, we're like good to go we put it in that like like little little uh tea tea like you know that that really durable plastic we just shove it in there and put it in our pouch and we call it good but like when you're out there when there's like hail wet like what wood do you choose what uh what kind of uh, uh resources do you do and and what progression because if you're in different environments like the game changes you can't be like so right. solid that like hey i need this this and this you need to be able to observe you need to be able to to kind of picture and play almost like a chess game of like what your priorities are because things kill you very fast in those environments when you're kind of stripped down you know that's so, so intense, like man. i know it's 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 so fun to do this it's so fun to do this and these guys are just and and girls because uh the, the last season seven um two of the top three people were these badass women and uh to be uh, linked into them and being like uh this is their approach and it's a little different and it's it's just awesome to like get to know these people and to have that network and i'm happy to share that network because like these are the people i hang out with you know so they come to our events and uh they they teach what they know and they know so much man they know so much it seems you know the more the more and more like quote unquote civilized we become we, we have to we have to give up something right and that that's the the side you're talking about right like the the understanding of how like nature works around you like i yeah sure i don't yeah. use an iphone but i don't know what fucking rock to pick up to cut up fish like and if that yeah. that day ever comes you know, like I, I, I guess it's the, the the individuals that can adapt the fastest that, that figure yeah. it out, and then you're 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 left with like the most primal human beings. But like, as it stands right now, ninety nine percent of people that at least live in cities, mm -hmm. like we don't we don't know. I don't I don't know. Yeah. So dude, that's such yeah. a, that must be such a like. What's the fee is it is there kind of like a like obviously you enjoy it like I can tell like you're yeah you're passionate about it. you got a business like it, i can just tell in your voice like you're you're really fired up when you talk about this stuff but when you're out there in the woods and you're learning like how to survive is there like a connection that you, you feel that's like different than anything else that you do back at home such a deeper connection like not like even outside of this survival training that's only been going on for the past like maybe five years like before that i, I did a lot of international um trips 
um, working with like indigenous group, like the Maasai people specifically, oh, cool. and just to not touch your phone for like a week and to just appreciate how the sun hits your face and like the, how an orange tastes on your lips. Like it's almost like a meditative uh, type of uh, experience when all you're experiencing and thinking of is what's right in front of you and what you need maybe today and maybe tomorrow. Um, and uh, it's just a different way of uh, life. And I, fi I feel like the appreciation for every single moment, every single taste, every single sensation is completely different. And I find that same type of appreciation when I go out on these adventures, because like you're there and you're just experiencing everything. And it might be for the first time or you might done it a million times, but I, I, can, I can speak for, for Donnie and people like Donnie Every time they go out, they feel that. And that's why they, they want to stay out, you know? That's, uh, you mentioned the, pr the presence. Of presence. Just being and enjoying something like an orange and the sun. It's, um, it's something that I, I've come around to start appreciating, I guess. And really recently too, yeah. just because as far as I've like just started, you know, my, my journey and my path, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, it's just, it's so chaotic. Right. And you know, with kids, it and, is. And just like, I'm missing something because I, and I, I was talking about this with a friend, you know, like, like at what point do I, do I say like, okay, I'm, I'm good. Like, you know, I, I'm always thinking, well, I need to do this to in the future. And like, when I hit this metric and when I get to this goal and, I've accomplished other goals and I'm still not at the point where I feel like, Oh, that was, that, that felt really good because I, mm -hmm. there's this other that I'm searching for, but th this whole idea of presence and like, you know, reading like Eckhart Tolle and like the Stoics, it's like, you know, all there is is now everything else is irrelevant. And it's so hard to wrap my head around, but from yeah. what you're talking about, it's, it's really getting grounded in nature seems like that, that mm -hmm. critical component. And like, you don't yeah. have to like, I don't have to start like mm -hmm. cutting fish with like a flint knife. Yeah. Right? I, it could just yeah. really just be, be more present, just be there. And get into nature a little bit more. And that's, that's something I definitely mm -hmm. don't do enough is, is get out in nature and just enjoy it. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm sure like that fish that you ate after you like made a so good. knife and oh, like probably the best fish you ever had in your life. Big time, big oh, time. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, we're making so, bread on the fire and everything like that. Oh man, great. yeah, there must be. Yeah, I mean that's pure primal, right? And I, I don't think a lot mm -hmm. of human beings get to experience that anymore. So, look, uh, dude, this this is so cool. I, I, we were talking about this for a while, but like, I'm so glad. We, yeah, we, we got a chance to actually fire this up, and um, you know, you got to share you know, what you do and, and, um, you know, what your experience have, have been like, uh, not only, you know, for the hard to kill community, but here, like on the, on the podcast, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, people that, you know, aren't in the military that, you know, love hearing the different perspectives and you've definitely mm -hmm. got a really cool one, man. So, um, have you got any, like, you've got that giveaway going on right now. Um, yep. you've got, you've got the website. Um, how do they, how do people find you? Like, what are your handles? Uh, like on IG, yep. Twitter, everything like that. So on IG, Twitter, uh, pretty much everything you can survive. Uh, you can find me on survival dot doctors. So it's kind of uh, just two words split up and doctors just make sure it's plural and you'll find me. Um, and uh, if you want to go directly to all my kind of social handles, it's just www.survivaldoctors.com forward slash links. And you can find all my stuff and uh, the giveaway. Uh, the giveaway is pretty, pretty epic because it's not only medical stuff. It's a lot of survival stuff. Key things that I wish I had starting out. So if I was brand new, this is the stuff that I would have to the point where everything in this giveaway is an upgrade to my current current stuff. So these are all the <laughs> items that I wish I still have. Like, <laughs> I, like th this is my this is my baby. I've had this for seven years. This is a carpenter's uh, forest axe. Um, and the one that I'm giving away is a 24 inch, uh, 2.4 pound head designed by an alone champion. 77 days in the wild alone. And that's the axe that he killed a Wolverine with, you know, to get that design wow. directly from Siberia. Like this is a Russian Siberian, like, like axe shipped all the way here uh, to North America to get that as just one prize is huge. You know, it's a $250 thing, but just the added fact that this was designed by someone who's done it. And this is his personal specification is just like mind blowing. I want that axe, but I can't get it. I can't buy it. You can't buy it. There's not enough uh, to, to ship. There's, so, a, like, myth, there's said, a myth. Ar there's a myth around it. That's incredible. <laughs> there's a myth. <laughs> he so cool, man. shot a Wolverine and and hammered it down with that uh, that axe. 
Wolverines are one of the scariest things. To, they take down wolves, they fend off bears. And it, that Wolverine was uh, eating his moose supply. So he's basically like, it's either the it's either the Wolverine or me. And he got it one night and just finished them. Wow, man, that's such a cool story. So, man, yeah, those are those those are my friends. You know, those are the dudes in my circle. So it's it's really cool so to like intense man talk about them. Yeah, you got and we cool have um, yeah, and another cool thing that I wanted to show off is uh, this book knife because uh, uh, one of the other things that we don't typically have is a really good high carbon blade. This is from Sniper Blade Works. They uh, produced this knife for a show on Discovery Channel. So you're literally getting uh, something that you can't really buy. Mm. Uh, and it was on Discovery Channel. It's kind of like um, a belt clip over here, which I really like because you can change configurations. Uh, I like carrying it like this just because of the weight. And mm. there's like zero rattle here. Very nice fitting. And this blade's huge. Like you can process oh. uh, wood so, so well with this. Has a little bit of a pistol grip ergonomics. So when you're snapping at things, it, it will cut through quite a lot. So um, I use this as like almost like a mini hatchet at times. It's freaking cool, man. Yeah. Man, and all... we have hand forged blades, you know, like a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> oh, so these are all the things that like, you know, like you start building your arsenal and then yeah. your wife's like, what are you doing down there? It's like nothing, honey. It's just like a little side. I got my little side room, right? It's like my little, yeah. room. I got my little shelves and stuff. That'd be freaking cool to have in there, man. Just got to make sure the kids don't get a hold of it. Got to keep them up on a high shelf. Oh yeah. Away. Like a safe or something. Very cool, man. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so team and Jin, man, always a pleasure. And uh, I think we definitely need to touch base a few more times. Um, and, and if anything, absolutely you know, uh, share a lot more of your survival stuff, uh, you know, with, yep. um, with our community and, and, and build up that network because dude, it's so cool. Like mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, it's it literally how you stay hard to kill on all fronts, not just, you know, like in, in the combat zone or like at work or anything like that. Like when you're thrown into that, uh, the wild in that, you know, survive or die, um, situation. Um, like you're, you're mm -hmm. on the forefront of that, man. So it's really cool to, to sit down and, and chat with you today. So wish you all the best, Absolutely. man. I, I'm, de I'm, Thank getting, you, on, I'm you getting too. on that giveaway right now, man. I'm going to share that. Yeah, do it. Get people on it. Wicked, for dude. sure. For sure. Thanks for being on the podcast, buddy. Take care. Love to be here. Take care, bud. Thanks for listening to the podcast. You can find out more about training, nutrition, and mindset at DaveMorrow.net. Be sure to like us on Facebook and Instagram at DaveMorrowPT. And don't forget, strong people are hard to kill.